Hey, what's up? Have you ever read a fight scene and let and that fight scene left you breathless? Not just from the action, but the depth of it, the emotional stakes involved. Well, I have to tell you, today we're gonna we're gonna go over how to write fight scenes that pack a punch. Pun intended. Anyway. Why is that important, Thomas? Well, you know, understanding how to craft a compelling fight scene enhances your narrative by providing intense, character-driven, and character-defining moments that engage the impact your readers deeply desire. Now, more importantly, the important, important element of it is a fight scene has to be more than punching and kicking. It has to have purpose. But what is a fight scene? A fight scene, unlike a large scale battle scene, which we did in a previous video, a fight scene usually involves personal conflict between one or more characters, but no more than a lot. It's usually a few because it is a fight, right? We're not talking large scale conquest here. We're talking about individuals right it's a concentrated clash where physical actions entwine with emotional undercurrents usually revealing deeper character traits and influencing the story's direction for example hello my name is Amig uh, <laughs> Ignig oh my god <laughs> Hello, my name is Enigma Motoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Holy hell, that was terrible. Hello, my name is Enigma Motoya. I can't even say it. Dyslexia. My specific, by the way, took me years to retrain my brain and my mouth to say specific. Specific. Anyway. All right, moving on. Uh, before before we get into, I'm gonna show you a real. Uh, I'm gonna I'm going to literally outline a fight scene in real time. Uh, so that'll be exciting, right? Uh, but before we do that, as always, I like to give some tips so you could be thinking about these things while I am going over the fight scene, uh, outlining the fight scene in real time. So one of the first tips is you want to establish stakes. We've talked about this uh, in the battle one as well, but ultimately, the short of is being uh, begin by defining what's at stake in the fight. You know, if it's just "Hey, how's it going?" Bam, bam, bam. Oh, that was cool. Look, we made him flip around. What what is really happening, right? So, you want to know what does each character stand to gain or lose the stakes because these stakes will drive the tension and uh, dictate how invested the readers will feel about that character if it's a if it's just for style and like you know hey look fireworks you know what i'm saying uh are you really doing anything is anything really happening uh but ultimately a true narrative is made up of a plot and a story plot is what needs to happen story is how it unfolds through the emotional experiences of the character so pl a plot fight would be that a fight happens there's some flashiness maybe flipping around ding 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 disarm maybe a sword maybe a gun whatever whatever it is wherever maybe a laser you know because it could be the future right but that's just plot. There's nothing of, of substance there. The, the story element is why that fight's happening, what the stakes are, et cetera, et cetera. And that, that is what's driving us to experience the story of the narrative. It's what's pulling us through the events. It's what makes us appreciate certain things. For example, uh, even the Legolas fight uh, against the Oliphant, uh, where he 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 basically kills everybody on it, and then kills the elephant, elephant, and then Gimli's like, "Let's do counts as one," right? Uh, we don't really. It's cool that he's doing that, but it's really the payoff that matters. Let's do counts as one. Like we're all like, you know, like that's because the emotional truth of the characters is really what drives. But if it was just that, and then we move on to the next fight. It wouldn't have the same impact. And this is why before writing a scene, a fight scene, clearly define what is at risk for each character involved in the fight. Are they fighting for survival, protection of a loved one, honor, revenge, or something else? 
understand their motivations. By understanding their motivations, uh, this will not only clarify the stakes, but also help you convey the urgency, very important, urgency and agency, and the importance of the fight to the reader. Uh, more importantly, with establishing stakes, uh, when you're writing it out, you could plot the fight. You know what I'm saying? You could just be like, these things happen. Uh, you know, I want to see the person jump through a window or I want to see the person use their environment. Whatever. These are like little things that we're not really emotionally involved in, but you can plot out a fight before you get to the emotional stakes. But I, I you know, like when you're working on your book and you're just kind of like getting through it, just get through the movements if you want. But ultimately, when you go back to do the work on the next draft, or even at the end of your writing session and the next day, you're like, let me go back and kind of work on that. Start creating the value of that scene. What are the emotional truths? You know, that's one way to sort of get through fight scenes without having to do like tons of work beforehand. Uh, I personally like to kind of do that all in the back end. Anyway, if you've watched my videos, I'm an outlining freak. Uh, <laughs> I have a lot of a lot of information in my outlines. Anyway, um, so one of the other things is uh, you do want to make the stakes personal to each character, especially in a fight, because, again, it is more intimate a fight than a battle. Uh, the personal connection will usually heighten the emotional impact of the scene. And, uh, you know, the other thing is you want to communicate the stakes to the reader. Uh, I, I know you should be writing for yourself and you should be. But ultimately, like. You need a viewership, right? It's like when you write a movie or a television show. You don't you write it for yourself because it's something you want to write. It's something you're passionate about. Uh, you believe in the story. It's so, you're trying to say something, right? But ultimately, because it's a medium that is experienced through the eyes of other people, you do want to utilize the way you write it to influence those emotions in people. Um, you know, it's it's not like you're making it for yourself and then because you already know all the truth. Right. But because you have that bias understanding of the story, the the plot and the characters and all this historical elements of it, um, you don't necessarily need to communicate to yourself to clarify because you already know it. But to give readers the thing that you feel, you have to clarify certain things. You have to clarify stakes, motives, uh, backstory, things like that. Now, of course, you could always go overboard and start doing way more than you should and that becomes exposition dumps i always recommend seeding that and spreading it out but um it's important though just like any chapter uh you set up the chapter then you challenge that chapter and then you resolve that chapter and that re resolution might not end the narrative but it ends uh it ends whatever plague that chapter right whatever the purpose of that chapter was so you want to communicate stakes to the reader early in the scene, the setup, especially or or even the fight, the beat of the fight. You want to communicate the stakes, right? So make sure uh, you got to ensure that the reader understands what the characters are fighting for and what are they going to gain or lose or where is the tension? All right. I'm sorry. That one went a little long. All right, uh, the structure, uh, structuring the scene. So the short of it is organize your fight scene with a clear beginning, middle, and end, a setup, a uh, conflict that challenges the setup, and then ultimately the resolution. Um, this usually is accomplished by starting uh, by setting the scene uh, with the motives, uh, positions of the characters, uh, both physically and emotionally, because remember we talk about positions, like where they stand and things, what they care about. Uh, how we're going to escalate the tension and conflict in the middle and ultimately resolve the clash with significant outcomes. Uh, the long of it is uh, when you look at the beginning as a setup, uh, this is where you're going to set the physical and the emotional scene. OK, uh, this is where the fight is taking place. Maybe you want to allow the environment, uh, the surrounding and the, the, the setting itself to take part. I would recommend at least uh eradicating the white room issue okay uh but more importantly as you continue okay you want to establish the motivations of each character and set the tone with descriptive details and build the scenes atmosphere the tension or maybe it's a friendly a friendly competition we don't know right 
in the middle this is where you want to intensify everything so whatever you set up in the beginning we got to elevate it and by the way the beginning doesn't mean before the fight the beginning could encompass before the fight and during the fight the middle would be something else now you could make it where the before the fight is they're talking and then the middle is the fight and then the end is being broken up right you could do that because uh, it's writing it's creative medium um but you want to understand the choreography uh, going into the fight uh you want to balance action with brief moments of internal reflection or strategic thinking by the characters this could be done through physical actions by the way you don't have to have a character thinking oh maybe i should use that lantern over there no have them use the lantern and that would be a representation of them strategically. You know, they grab the land and use this their uh, the, their environment to help them. Um, but also, but also, uh, when you're plotting out or outlining a fight, as you'll see, sometimes, you know, you might start off with there's a couple punches. Uh, they tackle. They do this. They do that. And then maybe when you're writing it, you're like, you know what? I'm not going to get as detailed because. Depending on how you want the fight to feel, how as how visceral you want it, you might not use as many moves. Meaning, like you're not going to describe every punch, every kick, every strike, etc. All right. By the end, you you definitely want the resolution. The fight concludes with clear winners or losers, or perhaps the unexpected outcome, like a retreat or intervention all right so this is where you would describe the immediate aftermath and the emotional or physical toll on the characters they can't just win the fight or lose the fight and be like all right next but uh ensure that the resolution does indeed tie back to the stakes and motives established at the beginning of the fight or scene number three consequences of the fight the short of it is ensure the fight has meaningful consequences, both good or bad. Consequences are not just negative. They could be good or bad. So you want to make sure they have meaningful consequences for the characters and the overall plot. Whether a character wins or loses, the outcome should significantly alter their situation or internal state. This goes back to position. So a character's position, when challenged, uh, will either completely change somewhat change or not change at all and if it doesn't change at all they double down right so you could look at the results of a battle or a fight in the same way how do they uh, move forward are they completely changed somewhat changed, or not changed at all and if they're not changed at all usually you double down okay now the long of it is you know the fight should have a lasting impact on the character's development for example a defeat might lead to a crisis of confidence or a thirst for vengeance Vengeance. anyway uh well a victory could lead to overconfidence or new alliances the other thing that you should be thinking about is how does this fight specifically advance the plot or is it a fight for a fight's sake the outcome of the fight should at minimum advance something that has to do with the plot by opening up new and narrative pathways or closing others mm -hmm. for example the loss of a key character could propel propel not the drink but propel the protagonist into new conflicts and decisions the other thing that should or could or would happen is that the dynamics of not only this character but the group would change and you want to reflect on how the fight changes the relationship dynamics among the characters both with themselves and the uh those around them this could mean shifts in loyalty power dynamics or emotional connections which will influence future interactions the depth beyond the action all right layers layers the short of it is focus on the emotional and psychological levels layers of the fight how does the physical conflict reflect or contrast with internal struggles this depth makes the scene about more than just the physical actions no i'm sorry I need air. I need air. More importantly, though. Uh, so what I'm saying here is everything a character does has an emotional and physical toll on them. It's just some of those tolls are so minute we don't recognize them. In a fight, you can play with how much or how little their emotional or psychological tolls uh, uh, and even physical toll is influencing them. 
it's important to look at that because it's a cause and effect. That's why uh, when I see stories where, like, you know, <laughs> the protagonist is like a 15 year old and they uh, <laughs> they kill like people because they're the bad people, but like they're just the no names of the bad people, you know, and then they're just like death, 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 death. Next. I'm like, OK. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Uh, only because, you know, when I watch war films, when I did with my father or even like, you know, whatever kind of film where there's killing, you know, my father was in Vietnam. Uh, you know, he, he's obviously, he's obviously passed away by now, but, uh, he was in Vietnam and, uh, you know, it's, it's even a little bit, sometimes a lot. Anyway, the long of it. Uh, you, this is a good opportunity. These fight scenes are a good opportunity to use as a window into the characters, a deeper emotional or psychological states. Basically, how are they reacting under extreme stress? Uh, what hidden fears or strengths are revealed? Um, how they, how they physically react to that scene and how they, they take charge or they shrink in or whatever the case may be is a good representation of character development. The other uh, the other concept that is very powerful for a fight scene is symbolic meaning. You could, you don't have to always. Sometimes the 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 the, uh, the blinds are blue. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes it's it is just the fight, but there should still be stakes and consequences. But you can add symbolic meaning. So consider what the fight sim uh, symbolizes within the larger narrative. Does it represent a broader conflict with the story? within the story such as a fight against societal norms or internal demons all right and finally but not least uh you want to focus on the, the choices characters make during the fight and how these reflect their personality or growth for, for example a character might choose to spare an opponent opponent highlighting a theme of mercy or a personal growth arc from vengeance to forgiveness um i say this often Allow your characters to make choices. They don't always have to make choices. But even when they don't make a choice, that is a choice. And you have to think to yourself, how is that influencing the character and their development? They didn't make a choice. So what does that do for them? And that is a challenge to their positions. Um, depending on the choice they did not make, you have to look, is this a position? They hold strongly, somewhat, or not at all. If they hold it really a strong position on it and it completely changes or changes slightly or doesn't change at all, that is a chance for character development. So a choice doesn't always have to be to do something. It could be to not do something. Um, sometimes in, in stories, uh, I should say narratives, when you, uh, when you are reading and the characters are sort of like, and then, and then, and then, you know, like this happens and then this happens and then this happens and then this. Happens. They're not necessarily making choices when they react to things. They might not necessarily be making choices. They may be just reacting to it. Um, for example, if someone goes to uh, to fight you using the fight, you might just be fighting back to survive. You're not necessarily making a choice. It's just it's imperative. You you're either going to die or not die. So you have to fight back. The choice would be to uh, fight that person to a point where you can escape. Uh, a good example is Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, Captain Jack Sparrow, but you heard of me. Captain Jack Sparrow is not trying to fight Will, but he is in a position where he has to fight Will so he can get out of there so he doesn't get caught. So everything he's doing is not to kill Will. It's to get out of there. That is a choice. But if they're just fighting because Will attacks him and he's like, oh, we'll just fight. Right. What's that do for character? Anyway. All right. So before we go into the walkthrough, uh, if you are enjoying this lesson and or have enjoyed other lessons but haven't done so already and you're looking for more insight on fine tuning your writing skills, remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. All right. Let's get to it. It's time. Ba -da -ba -da -da -da. Establishing stakes. All right, let's do it. All right, let's do it right off the bat. Let's establish some stakes. 
not steaks like you would eat and not steaks like you would stab. These are steaks that are at. <laughs> at steak. Okay. So uh, let's see. Do we want to just, uh, do we care? Do we care? Do we care what genre this is? Uh, do we care? Do we care what genre this is? Or do we, we just, we could just write. We could just write. All right. Well, I guess once I outline the fight, though, I'll have to uh, I'll have to determine it. We're just gonna make it because I I like I personally like writing in fantasy and like medieval times and uh, you know swords and sorcery. Okay, let's do uh, what's at stake here. Hmm, what is at stake? Uh, Jimmy Two Fingers. <laughs> Jimmy Two Fingers. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Jimmy Two Fingers was passed up uh, for uh, the wizard test. Tests. So uh, Albert of Stein. Did I spell that right? Stein. <laughs> Albert of Stein. Stein. Berg, right? Like Steinberg. Oh, I spelled that wrong. Okay. Uh, Albert of Stein. All right. So Albert of Stein. Um, uh, so Albert of Stein could take the tests because uh, their parents are on the board of wizards. <laughs> All right. So we're just setting up some ideas right now. So Jimmy Two Fingers was passed up for the wizard tests. Uh, okay. Um, passed up for the wizard tests. So Albert of Stein. Uh, Albert Einstein? Okay. Albert of Stein could take the tests because their parents are on the board of wizards. Mm, mm, mm. If Jimmy can hurt not kill but hurt albert of stein in secret uh why can't i spell Boop. um he then would be able to take the place of albert and not have to wait a full year before getting his chance to graduate and become a cloaked member of the wizards okay. sounds terrible so get cloaked i did that graduate i did that okay i always check my spelling all right so jimmy two fingers was passed up for the wizard tests so albert of stein could take the test because their parents are on the board of wizards if jimmy can hurt not kill but hurt albert of stein in secret he then would be able to take the place of Albert and not have to wait. So, all right. So if we go back to what are the stakes, all right, and we think about what are the stakes, huh? Uh, in this situation, they are not fighting for survival protection, a loved one. Uh, this might be a touch of honor, but it's really for their motivation is I want to advance my career as a wizard and I've been passed up because this, this, uh, Nepo, Nepo baby over here. All right. Now, um, uh, but we also, we also know the position by the way. So the position here is that, uh, Jimmy two fingers doesn't want to kill Albert. He just wants to hurt him enough so he could get his place. This is a, if we're looking at, um, uh, show girls, it's when uh, Jessica from uh, Saved by the Bell pushes the other girl down the stairs and hurts her, and then she gets to uh, dance on stage. Show girls. Anyway, <laughs> terrible movie. Um, so in this situation, I ju just for the record, by the way, this kind of would be worked out doing the long form outline. Uh, and you've seen me do that many a times where you take the 27 plot point outline and you kind of map out the beats of each section from the ordinary world to the inciting lens and so forth and so forth. This would technically be in there within a, a fight. 
uh, I mean, a, a plot point because it would be that Jimmy got one of the plot points would be Jimmy got passed over and he's angry about it and he wants to uh, attack Jimmy um, to ultimately get him hurt. So uh, not Jimmy. Jimmy wants to hurt Albert so Jimmy can get his spot. That would be in the outline of the plot point. Uh, so this, I wouldn't have to work this out now. It would already be established because we're just seeing choices made. Jimmy is upset because he got passed over and he's going to take action to hurt, not kill, hurt Albert. And that would be in the 27 plot point outline. I'm writing it here so you know that it, it exists, okay? So now... The the big the big thing to do is let's talk about the outline. How are we going to outline this? Uh, what do we want to do? Right. So again, there needs to be a beginning, a middle, an end. Okay. Set up. Set up. Conflict. Rezo resolution. You're going to need that resolution. I like to make that red. Okay. So the beginning, uh, the beginning is going to be like Jimmy follows Albert. Jimmy Two Fingers follows Albert of Stein. From the headmaster's office of congratulations, office of congratulations, uh, and stays as hidden as possible, uh, well behind him. Okay, so again, this is just the beginning, all right? Uh, let's see what else. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple more beats within this this thing. Um, nom, 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 nom. Albert ends up heading to. Uh, let's see. Um, to the library. Okay. To study or his big physical wizard test coming up. So now I'm also setting, what am I setting up? I'm setting up the uh, the setting, literally. I'm creating the environment. It's going to be in the library. Okay. Which also makes it difficult because Albert, what is what is part of his, uh, his thing is he doesn't, he doesn't, he has to do it in secret, right? Uh, right, 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 right. Yeah, 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 in secret. Okay. All right. Um, Jimmy approaches Albert once the, the last person leaves the area or the large library. Prairie room. All right. Now, this is still the beginning, okay? Uh, this is where uh, Albert um, notices, acknowledges, acknowledges Jimmy, and they have a conversation that seems pleasant. Albert is being kind and sorry that Jimmy didn't get the uh, oh that that Jimmy got passed over. Now, Albert doesn't know that it's because of his parents, but Jimmy does. Now this is a note for myself. All right, so that means this might come off through dialogue. Maybe we don't know yet, but I need to know that. I need to know that Jimmy doesn't know. I mean, Jimmy knows, uh, and Albert doesn't know. 
which means that now that I have that, I need to seed that earlier in the story, or I should say the narrative, right? But anyway, uh, so Albert notices, uh, notices, notices, uh, Albert notices, I should just write notices and acknowledges Jimmy Two Fingers. And they have a conversation that seems pleasant. Albert is being kind and sorry that Jimmy got passed over. I'm actually going to do something else. Uh... No, no, that's good. That's good. That's good. Um, Jimmy takes note that the place is quiet and empty. He makes his first move, causing books to fly in and hit Albert. <laughs> The fight, the fight, by the way, the fight started uh, as soon as Jimmy made the choice, to, Jimmy Two Fingers made the choice to follow Albert. But as you can see, the fight doesn't have to physically be a fight, but it is the beginning of the confrontation. He is following him with purpose. All right. He makes his, now, if you notice, I didn't really, I didn't really go too specific. I was just like, yeah, uh, causing books to fly in and hit him. I'm not writing. Like, oh, you know, he took a very specific book, you know, the book of blah, 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 and, uh, you know, he used it and hit Albert's head, you know, uh, causing books to fly and hit Albert. Albert uh, uh, goes into defensive mode, blocking books and causing tables to move uh, as a shield. Oh, yeah. All right. Now, <clears throat> we're going to do one more action beat, and then we're going to go into the comp the midpoint conflict, okay? So the action beat is... Jimmy... Oh. Uh, he explodes one of the tables that Albert is using as a shield. Albert runs off hiding behind uh, the, the bookshelves. Bookshelves moving and trying to cast conceal spells. Now, this starts the now the tension increases because now it's a cat and mouse chase. Jimmy Two Fingers moves around the library uh, after casting a lock spell on the main exit where only the wizard who cast it can cast it can cancel it unless uh, they are uh, killed or knocked out right okay uh, Jimmy will be uh, taunting Albert. All right. Now we got Albert moves around knowing that when he moves, his conceal spell flickers and shows uh, shows uh, a static version of him, of himself in that place. So he has to make every move count. All right. Uh, Jimmy thinks he sees Albert and casts uh, energy ball. Of, uh, uh, that designed. Whoops. Yeah, it'll take me off. Boop. All right. Is designed to knock uh, a person back. Maybe compulsory or something like that. All right. He misses 
uh, Albert and knocks several bookshelves. Mm. All right. Now, I want another beat. I want another beat, 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 beat. So, with this, I have to really think. Uh, by the way, this could expand once I get into the real stuff, but these are just the beats. All right. Um, so now maybe uh, maybe Albert makes his move and casts. Uh, sleep. At Jimmy. Uh, who blocks it with a reverse reversal of the spell. And this gives him a good look at where Albert is. All right. So from there, uh, the two push off into a back and fourth casting of spells. Uh, Jimmy's are aggressive, whereas Albert's are are there to uh, restrain uh, restrain Jimmy. Two fingers. All right, so that leads us into the resolution. Okay. All right. This is the way we're going to do it. Now, if you notice, if you notice, uh, well, in the beginning I have, uh, what is that, five? Um, but as soon as, as soon as, uh, as soon as they start talking, there's three beats, right? So I don't always do this, but it is, it's a fun, it's, it's a nice rule that I kind of follow. And then I expand on those. Uh, so we have a beginning and middle end to each thing. Sort of like when I look at my 27 plot outlines, I also have a beginning, middle and end, right? So there's, there's every, every, um, segment. Or section uh, in an act, there's three sections in an act, and each section has three plot points. So you can literally look at each act as a beginning, middle, and end. Then you could look at each act itself within it, because that's three sections as a beginning, a middle, and end. And then you could look at each section with the three plot points as a beginning, middle, and end. And then you could even break down that, you could break that down further. So I like to sort of look at it as a beginning, a middle, and end. Uh, but then, if I if I wanted to, I could take this, and I could turn that into a beginning, middle, and end. I could say, all right, well, how am I going to play this out? I got to, and it will always be a setup, a conflict, and a resolution. All right. Anyway, uh, so how are we going to end this fight? Okay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right, Albert pushes himself and casts <laughs> a spell that goes wrong uh, shooting off a fireball instead of a uh, mist spell. Uh, this happens because he is under pressure. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Jimmy gets the back backlash of the fireball splash uh, and has to put out the fire. on his clothes and the fire around him causing the library to ignite ig ignite i can't spell spelling is without you oh, I guess it is. all right 
Albert runs over uh, and grabs uh, Jimmy, helping him get away from the fire growing. Jimmy is confused and shocked that Albert would help him. Uh, Jimmy has burns on his leg and arm, arm and needs uh, Albert to help him get to the door. When they get there, Jimmy cancels the lock spell, allowing them to get out. Uh, well, and then we could just do the, the very ending. Well, there, uh, others run over because of the flames, uh, and uh, wizards uh, knock out the fire and check on the boys. All right, so there we go. Okay, that's pretty straightforward, right? Uh, so now, now we have to say to ourselves, uh, which is the big, the big question, though. The big question is, uh, we got to add some character in there, right? So I feel like I already added character. That's what happens when you do this all the time. You just kind of add little things on purpose. Um, so the character would be like choices and stuff. Let me let me give you this like now. All right. So character would be choices, uh, challenges of position. All right. So Albert notices. Okay, Albert. Time. So maybe this would be a. All right, Jimmy. Two fingers. Doesn't. Doesn't appreciate being passed over i think i spelled that wrong but passed over uh passed over and albert says uh that jimmy could have got gotten it but the headmasters know best Right. And then uh, maybe maybe like uh, your parents are the only reason you got this chance over me, and then. Uh, Albert might say, uh, Albert tells him that they are both good at the level they are now. It's just, it's just that it came down to little things. Yeah. Little things like you are the son of blah and blue. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so now we're creating a little bit. We're we're developing the character. We're like we're weaving some character development in there. And if you notice, I I know it's just silly right now, but uh, we're doing some challenging of positions. We're presenting. Um, we're presenting certain things. So Jimmy Two Fingers doesn't appreciate being passed over. So now we we know why he's there. It's without a doubt. If it hasn't been set up before the scene, Albert now knows. Right? And Albert says, basically, as you can see, Albert, though, is not a rude person. He's actually kind of nice, right? But he's like, look, I think you should have you should have gotten it. But, you know, the, the, the headmaster's no best. So we're establishing that Jimmy actually believes, I mean, uh, Albert believes in Jimmy, but Albert also believes in the system. He believes, you know, whoever is, whoever is has to do what they do, right? 
there's an order to things. Uh, and then obviously Jimmy's like, they don't know best. Your parents are the only reason you got this chance over me. And then Albert's just like, yeah, but, uh, we're both very good at the level we are at. Like we're very good. It's just that it just came down to little things. And he's like, no, the little things, you're the son of blah and blah. Okay. And then maybe I would, uh, you know, I'd go into, I would have conversation in here too. Like, so, uh, let's see, Jimmy. So the, oh, the taunting focus on Jimmy saying that they aren't equal and that he'll, uh, that Albert will never be as good as him, but I, as in Jimmy, will never get a chance to prove myself if people like you are always getting handouts. All right. So, uh, okay. And then that could turn into a conversation. Now, you might be asking yourself, uh, Thomas, or self, you, hey, self, um, this doesn't really look like a scene, but this is just outlining a scene. This is plot. The narrative would be, if I wanted to write a narrative, that's where I would take this, and I'd go all the way down here, and i go, all right, got to write this. The, uh, the door to the headmaster's master's uh, office open with a gentle crack and a simple a simple uh, no a pleasant a ple pleasant goodbye goodbye from albert right so the door so i think that's kind of actually a uh, passive but uh let me just go albert opened the, the Headmaster's master's door office door uh, with a gentle with a gentle a gentle and pleasant crack offering his goodbyes as he closed the door behind him. All right, and then I would, uh, you know, now we got to get. All right, so we know that he uh, he's leaving the doors, and then um, now it's the next beat. You know, I could I could do it from the POV of Albert or Jimmy, but I think Jimmy would be watching. So Jimmy, uh, Jimmy uh, stopped at the corner of, uh, of the main hall. Leading to the headmaster's master's office. Placed uh, himself. By the way, this is not perfect writing. This is just getting it out of my head. Uh, he placed himself flat against against the wall with a sly eye. I think it's sly eye. Uh, peeking out from the corner as Albert opened the office door with a gentle, a gentle crack and a pleasant, a pleasant goodbye uh, before closing the door behind him, right? Oh, hmm. Mm. He counted. He counted a few steps. Uh, steps, letting Albert. Uh, reach a safe distance. Oh, letting Albert reach a safe distance. Uh, okay. Uh, he, he, oh, I could just do this. Thing. 
he counted he counted a few steps letting albert reach a safe distance um as he stepped off the wall followed behind him right so i would just do that like i would just take these beats and i would just start developing them so this first beat is jimmy follows albert from the headmaster's office to congrat uh, oh, of congratulations and stays as hidden as possible well behind him um so i would this one beat right here might turn into one two or three passages it depends on the pacing you know um i might even want to uh uh, with each with each step, Jimmy tried to make sense of being of being past 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 up by this young fool of a student. His disdain. Well, this is the uh, raked against his brow, folding, folding, fold, folding, fold. Am I right? No, folding his anger. Across his face. Okay. He struggled to keep his breathing down. Uh, his frust oh, keep his frust frustrated breathing down. Uh, unsure that his his distance was enough. To conceal him, him, the boy took his opportunity away. All right, now there's a couple things going on here. All right, I'm uh I'm adding some context. I'm uh there's a lot of internal processing going on, but since it's in third person limited, right? We're allowing that uh, we're doing some showing and some uh, some telling. But he's basically following. And that, that's how I would do it. So I would take this craziness, which is just, to me, rambling. All right? And then I would do like a zero draft, which is this, right? Which is just uh, me kind of go like working through the beats, taking the first beat, which in this case is this. And as you can see, I made two passages from that, two pros. Uh, you know? <clears throat> I might even... I might even show Albert stopping to talk to somebody and then Jimmy has to wait, you know, like there would be things that I would add to that just in general, because I'd be like, I want to build on the scene. I want to create suspense and tension. So before they even get to the library anyway. All right, there you go. Where are we? I don't know, Thomas. Okay. Uh, question. Uh, what's a fight scene from a book or movie that really impacted you and why was it John Wick's? battles in every single movie all right uh if you haven't already please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out uh final thoughts a well-crafted fight scene is much more than a mere display of physical prowess or action it's a crucial crucial narrative moment that should offer deep insights into the characters and significantly advance the plot in the situation with the scene i just worked out in real time uh jimmy's initial uh annoyance at albert stemmed from jealousy and anger and then by the end of the fight what happened narratively speaking jimmy's idea of albert changed when albert not only was choosing not to hurt jimmy <coughs> but when jimmy got hurt albert went out of his way to risk his own life through the fire to save albert and pull him out character development plot right that's going to lead to the next thing somebody's going to get in trouble for that and maybe jimmy is going to have to wait even longer or be expelled because of it as a consequence anyway you want each fight scene 
to have a purpose, to be used to reveal character traits, test relationships, and push the storyline in new directions. This is why you want to ensure that every fight scene is tightly integrated with the story's broader themes and the character's arcs. It should feel like a natural yet pivotal part of the narrative, not an isolated spectacle. The emotional and physical outcomes of the fight need to resonate Through, the subs, uh, uh, through each chapter, influencing the character's decisions and the story's trajectory. And while doing these things, strive, uh, while doing these things, you should strive to balance the visceral excitement of the action with deep emotional resonance. The physical movements and strategies should mirror the internal struggles and growth of the characters involved, making the scene rich with both action and emotional choice. And remember, the choices are, in that situation, Albert made the choice to not escape or try to escape when Albert was clear, when Jimmy was clearly hurt and on the ground. Albert made the choice to save Jimmy Two Fingers. All right? And this is why you want to use fight scenes as a reflective move, a moment for both characters and your reader. And plus, the post-fight. You know, characters might contemplate their actions, face new fears, or reassess their goals, uh, providing a moment of introspection, introspection and character development that enriches your narrative. And that's what I would have probably added for the weaving the character moment into the resolution, the third part of that scene. I would have added little elements that, again, Jimmy is probably rethinking his friendship. Now he feels a little, he feels bad. He feel, He's like, wow, I misjudged this guy. And yeah, so what? His parents helped him out, but he's he's a good guy, and you know he deserves this. And I and I'm wrong, which would be his position completely changing. Of course, I could have wrote it the other way. I could have made it where it doesn't change at all, and he doubles down. And he goes, Ah, you look. I knew I knew you wanted me out of the race. You shot a fireball at me, but we know based on it that Albert was just not trying to cast a fireball. He just he cast the wrong spell, and a fireball shot out. You know, um, but as you write and revise your fight scenes, continually seek ways to tighten the prose, enhance the emotional stakes and integrate the scene more seamlessly into your novels. Uh, purpose and truth. Each revision can bring new insight and improvements, making the scenes more effective and compelling. Experiment with different styles and intensities of fight scenes to discover what best suits your narrative and genre whether and ultimately to conclude whether your scenes are quick and brutal or elaborate and tactical finding unique uh, your specific unique style will help you captivate and engage your readers more effectively once you understand your voice and the style in which you write next video in the series we're going to outline major action sequences. Action sequences are different than fights. They are just literally what they are, action set pieces. All right. Now, with that said, you know, uh, I, I say it often, and I just want you to know, um, you know, you got to you got to you got to keep your scenes vivid and your characters vibrant. You got to keep working on every moment. All right. Remember, writing is rewriting. All great writers have great editors like there's a whole process to it um and when you look at your stuff it's okay that your first thing has to change or things have to be adjusted greatness comes with the real work writing is the easy part the hard part is doing the work afterwards being able to cut things out being able to say i don't all right this needs to change or being willing to adjust things that's the hard work so with that peace and harmony truth and action and as always keep Developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time. Bye.